In 1875, the Sioux were directed to return to their reservations, and Sitting Bull, Crazy Horse, and Rain in the Face refused. Soon, several tribes began gathering together at Sitting Bull's encouragement. Eventually, nine different tribes came together, the largest gathering of Indians yet to occur, and the foundations of what would become the signature confrontation of the Indian Wars, the Battle of the Little Bighorn. If Buffalo Bill was the number one photo op of the West, George Armstrong Custer was definitely number two. Custer was a mass of contradictions. Graduated last in his class at West Point. He was court-martialed twice. In both cases, his sentences were suspended. Custer's service in the Civil War was outstanding. He was known as, quote, leading from the front. He was also known as a rash decision maker. Prior to the Battle of the Little Bighorn, Custer discovered massive corruption among Indian agents on the reservations and the Department of Indian Affairs in Washington, stealing food and other essential supplies intended for the Indians. He reported this widespread activity and testified in hearings, even accusing President Grant's brother as an accomplice. After Custer's death, Grant publicly stated, quote, Custer's sacrificing of troops was wholly unnecessary. Eight days before the Battle of the Little Bighorn, there was an encounter between General George Crook and Lakota Sioux and Cheyenne, led by Crazy Horse, that took place called the Battle of Rosebud Creek in present-day Montana. A northern Cheyenne woman named Buffalo Calf Roadwoman so impressed the male warriors with her bravery that the tide of battle shifted. Her brother, named Comes in Sight, had his horse shot out from under him, and Buffalo Calf Roadwoman rode directly into the conflict to rescue him. The Cheyenne refer to this conflict as Battle Where Girl Saves Brother. Some accounts say she rode into battle with her baby strapped to her back. This battle did not result in a decisive victory for either side, but it set the stage for a week later at the Battle of Little Bighorn and quite possibly answering the biggest question of the entire Indian Wars, who killed Custer? Fearing a massive uprising, the army sent several detachments in search of Sitting Bull, believing his force to number less than 800. This is the 7th Cavalry on its way to the Little Bighorn region. Custer's orders were to coordinate with the other units and to look for Sitting Bull's camp, which he did locate. With his force of 205 troopers and wanting all the glory for himself, Custer intentionally moved his command at top speed to be in a position to attack ahead of the other detachments. Custer dismissed several warnings from his Crow scouts. Custer, fearing Sitting Bull would escape along the Little Bighorn River, ordered an immediate charge. The Indians responded with over 2,000 warriors, a 10 to 1 advantage, half with rifles, and half of these were repeating Winchesters. The cavalry had only single-shot rifles. They were outnumbered and outgunned. Custer's tactics were questionable at best. He divided forces into three groups, thus they could not effectively support each other. The battle lasted two hours. All the cavalry were killed and bodies mutilated except Custer. This is an image of the two officers Custer dispatched, splitting his command into three groups. Captain Frederick Bunting, on the left and Major Marcus Reno. Both groups were several miles away from Custer's command when Reno was attacked. Several conflicting accounts emerged over years of testimony. Essentially, Reno's command was attacked by 900 Sioux. Benteen appeared to be responding to an order from Custer to come to his aid. Benteen encountered Reno under attack and pleas from Reno that he had lost half of his men and please come to his aid. Benteen 
did so, thus never responding to Custer's orders. Benteen's decision saved many soldiers' lives, but both he and Reno fell under intense military and civilian attack the rest of their lives, defending their decisions. This battle was the Indians' greatest victory and the Army's biggest defeat of the entire Indian Wars. In fact, it's been said by historians that the Indians' biggest victory was really the major cause for their ultimate defeat because any sympathetic view towards the Indian cause was lost and the government's effort to subdue them forced them back on reservation lands and increased. The Battle of the Little Bighorn has been written about, studied, and portrayed in film more than any engagements in the American military history. In years to come, scores of depictions of Custer's last stand were painted. This massive 9 by 16 foot version was one of the most popular images. It was to end up as a poster for beer, later lost in a museum fire. Personally, I prefer this classical composition by Frederick Remington. Cheyenne accounts from participants in the battle confirm Buffalo Calf Road Woman, who carried a pistol and a war club, rode directly at Custer and knocked him off his horse with her war club. Custer's body was found at this spot where he was clubbed and fell. He had two bullet holes in his body. Was he already dead from the blows and shot out of anger? Did he survive the blows? And if so, why remain at that spot when most of his command had moved to higher ground? These questions may never be fully documented, but Cheyenne accounts believe she killed Custer. She and her family, along with other participants, were mercilessly chased down by the military and in 1877 were forced to move to Indian reservations in Oklahoma. After a year of misery and starvation, about 350 Cheyenne left the reservation and began a 1,500-mile trek to their native lands in Montana. Along the way, she and her husband were separated from the others and arrested. While in prison, she contracted the white man's disease, diphtheria, and died at age 35 in 1879. The Battle of the Little Bighorn has been portrayed in books and over 50 films. It's a story the public never tires of, and it is a mixture of fact and myth. Episode 12 explores three human qualities. Bravery, misunderstanding, cowardice. It is the best and the worst of human behavior.